The Calgary Stampeders embarrass the BC Lions this past weekend, beating the Leos 41-17 in the Dome in Vancouver. Calgary entered the contest as a four-win team that had beaten only Ottawa, Edmonton, Saskatchewan, and the Chad kelly list Toronto Argonauts this year. Yet they made the run-happy, they looked like the run-happy Stampeders of 2022. With these teams set to play again in the West semifinal on November 4th in the same building, no less, did this result give you any pause about BC's chances? Absolutely did. I think the Stampeders on both sides of the ball found a formula that worked against the BC Lions. And look, them running all over the Lions does not shock me. This is not a team that is built for a physical downhill pounding on defense. They have holes in their run defense that can be exploited by a team that is willing to to commit to them. And this was the case last year. We talked going into the West semifinal about how Calgary could run all over the lines if they wanted to. And then they chose not to run the football almost at all in that game. And the result was a loss. Clearly, I think the Stampeders have learned from that mistake and don't want to repeat it going forward. But the bigger thing to me was what they did to the BC Lions offense, because Brett Monson came out with a strong game plan, a game plan that's been used on a couple of occasions by other CFL coaches this season to expose Vernon Adams Jr. and slow down that passing attack, which is primarily three man fronts, dropping nine, stick him in the pocket, let that poor lines protection manifest and have him panic as he goes through his reads. And he did not respond well, especially at the start of this game. And the only way that the BC Lions can defend the run is if they get out in front with their high power offense and put up points so the other team can't run anymore. They weren't able to do that in this football game. And the Stampeders now have a formula to replicate going forward. The Stamps, I think, should be the betting favorites going into that game at BC Place, as weird as it sounds. Ooh. BC is not wow. the same team that they were to start the season. That's right. I said they should be the betting favorites because of the way they went in and physically dominated the Lions. And I had one person tell me that they believe Vernon Adams Jr. is still head case. And I think there is an actual case to be made for that. The one thing that he needs to be able to do, as JC alluded to, when he sees these three-man fronts and there's all these guys in coverage – is get the ball out in rhythm. He needs to play within the structure of Jordan Maximic's offense. And that's why Nathan Rourke was so successful last year. They're a little bit different in terms of their styles. And I think Rourke overall is a more accurate passer. But Vernon Adams Jr. has to be able to win from the pocket in rhythm on time to at least have a chance to win that game. I really like the way Calgary is trending I think a lot of people, and us included, have been down on Jake Mayer through the season, but he's consistently put up some strong passing numbers. He's among the league leaders. They just haven't been able to finish. And I think Come in that on, game, Doug. they Come on. He, they he, had, to the run- he, he had 123 yards in that game and was under 50%. That's not exactly Jake Mayer's you know, greatest performance. Think throughout the season. So I think that he can make plays, but if they do commit to the run, I'm not saying in that game, sorry. Season. If, if they give it to Jake Mayer, they have no chance in hell. They have to win with I never the said run. That. I said if they run the football, Jake Mayer is capable of making some plays. For the most part of the season, Mayer has made plays. He's up there among the league leaders in passing yards, is he not? He is. He's up there he in is. the league leaders in passing yards. Well, he's also the like leader in his individual game. Exactly. He's- so he's made a lot of mistakes. But we've seen him get really hot, especially against the Toronto Argonauts at BMO Field. I was there in person. So I'm not saying that game. So don't get it twisted. Jake Mayer did not play well in that game. But I'm saying throughout the course of the season, we've seen flashes. He needs to be more consistent and protect the football. But if Calgary goes in there, runs the rock with Kadeem Carey, Peyton Logan, that offensive line is playing physical, then that's why I think the Stamps should be favorites in that game. I, I disagree on the Jake Mayer thing. Jake Mayer is the only quarterback in the CFL who has started 17 games this year. That is why he is at or near the top of any passing category. But with that being said, I will commend the Calgary Stampeders on what I would call 
well, I I want to use the word obvious offensive approach, but apparently this obvious offensive approach eluded them for almost an entire season. This is a team with two offensive tackles who have struggled terribly in pass protection. An interior of the offensive line that is dominant in the run game and can control the trenches. You've got great running backs, and yes, I know Kadeem Carey missed some time. I know that's, that Peyton Logan missed some time, but even D- Diedrich Mills has been very good, right? And you've got a group of receivers that have not been able to catch anything with any level of consistency. And you look at that formula, and to me, I'm like, great, we'll run the ball 30 times a game because our quarterback is inconsistent and our receivers let him down when he does make good plays. And really all we need is like one deep shot to Reggie Bagleton, stretch the field a little bit, and we can win because we know our defense is going to generate some turnovers. And for some reason, that formula, which, by the way, they used for most of 2022 to win 12 games, they abandoned this year, pretending that Jake Mayer or someone he's not, putting their offensive tackles in a bad position and trying to find receivers and just being unable to uncover any new talented blood, desperately missing some of their injured players. Jalen Philpott's been out all year. But my point is the Calgary Stampeders, better late than never. You figure out a game plan that actually matches your personnel, and now you've got healthy, rested star running backs for the postseason. Now, I do think that the BC Lions are going to have an opportunity to work on this formula. Let's not forget the Stampeders have to play this week. They host Winnipeg. BC gets to sit at home, watch the tape, and marinate in that stink and that loss, which I'm sure they hate. So I do expect the Lions to come out swinging in the West Semi. But kudos to the Stampeders. After going four wins for so long this season, you adjusted and it worked, which has finally added some intrigue to this West Semi, which I think until last week, everybody just assumed, whether it was Calgary, Saskatchewan, whoever, was going to be a bloodbath out West before the Lions inevitably came to Winnipeg for the West Final. The the reason why the Lions should still enter this playoff game favorites is exactly what you laid out there, Hodge. They have two weeks to prepare for this, and Calgary has showed their cards. That's the formula of beating the Lions. The Lions now know what it looks like. Can they adjust? Hopefully, with someone as innovative on offense as Jordan McSimmick calling the plays, they will make the necessary adjustments and make that Calgary run game a non-factor by what they can do on the offensive side of the ball. Well, defensively, just just fill the box. Fill the box and make Jake Mayer beat you. I don't think he can. If he can, God bless him. Prove me wrong. That would be great if Jake Mayer started playing great football. I don't think he could do it. Fill the box. But, again, we'll have to wait and see what BC does.